Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at all the different ways that you can navigate a user within your app. So we're going to show some basic things, some tips and tricks, some other ways that maybe you haven't thought of in order to get your users from point A to point B. In this app, you can see we have just a list of things, and we're going to show some ways that you can navigate in and out of these things, as well as some other ways that you can navigate around the app using similar tricks. So with these things here, the most common way to navigate in and out of things is just by using an inline list. So here I have a collection of items. I can tap on any of the items to access the detail screen for this item. Now, one common practice in Glide is to categorize these items. And we see that we already have categories. Some are blocks, clouds, or prisms. And you want a way to show them a category list, and then from the category, then show the list of items. So we have these like things within things. Inside your Glide table, you can create a list of categories. In this case, we have blocks, clouds, and prisms. And these are all of the unique categories that are found within the category column for each of these things. So in order to create that relation, we're going to go to our category sheet and create a relation between the name of the category and the category column in the things table. And since there's more than one thing per category, we're going to match multiple. And usually I call this relation to whatever the table is, relation to things. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new tab here, and we'll call this tab categories. And the categories will leverage the category sheet. You see it's automatically going to find the three categories. We can uh, make this look however we want. List is fine. We can do tiles. We want to show the image a little bit better. Get out of the tiles list to make an overlay. Completely up to you. And then from within this item, we are now in the details screen for that category. I'm going to make this title a little bit smaller. And then we have this inline list of related things. The source is going to be the relation to things. And now we see we have a list of all of the things that belong to this category. All right, there's sometimes where maybe you want to display things and categories on the same screen. Maybe you want a list of all of the things, but then a list of categories at the top. So in that case, you're not going to use a tiles list or any one of these first seven. Instead, you're going to use a detail screen because the detail screen is the only style which lets you have multiple components with multiple configurations on that screen. All right, so let's head back to, let's, go, let's create a new screen and we'll call this everything. And we're going to make this a detail screen. And whenever I make these types of screens, I like to source the screen based off of the user sheet. And the reason being is because sometimes we want to offer a way for our individual users to have a customized experience where one user can see things one way and a different user can see things a different way. And the only way to make that happen is to use user specific columns. And so if you source your sheet off of the users table, then inherently this screen is going to be user specific. So I'm going to source this off of the user sheet. And whenever you do that, you want to make sure you go to options, filter, and set it where email is the signed in user. That way, every single user is going to get their own version of the screen. All right, now I don't want to use this as a user profile screen, so I'm going to trash anything related to me. And instead, I'm just going to put some inline lists on here, where the first inline list is going to be a list of categories. And the second inline list is going to come from the table of things. So now we have a list of all of our things, and our image can be the image here. Right, and the categories can be a list of categories. And instead, I'm going to do a tiles like this. But I'm going to set it to too wide and make it horizontally scrolling. So that way, they can scroll across all the different categories. OK, so already you can see we can create some really interesting looking uh, screens here that have a variety of layouts to keep the, the user visually interested in the screen. And so here they can browse through and thumb through all of the things, or they can pick a different category, and then they'll have access to the things for just that category, like we set up on the category screen here. You can also allow users to navigate these items by allowing a search bar for each of the lists. 
So if I just turn on search bar for the categories and the search bar for the things in line list, then this search will actually search both. So if I search for blocks, we see that not only does it filter the category here for block, but also the things that are blocks. Same thing for prism, right? Or I can search for just a particular item. Now, sometimes I get requests for an explanation as to how to allow users to switch between a list of categories or a list of things on the same tab, but keeping those two things separate. And so what I like to do is leverage the choice component to act as a menu for that particular screen. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add in a new choice component. We're gonna add it to the top here, right? And this choice component, we're gonna switch to either the segmented view or the chips view, pick which style you like. And the items in this choice component are gonna be either categories or things. So we need two items to be part of that choice component, which means we need a sheet that has those two values in a particular column. So for that, I like to typically create a new table altogether and call it choices or call it menu. And here's a column that will be like home screen menu or something like that. And we're gonna add just two things. We're gonna add categories and things. So whatever words you want to display in that menu, okay? And so back in our home screen here, this everything screen, this choice component is now gonna be sourced from our menu. And you see we now have the option for categories or things. I recommend making it required. That way uh, you don't see that dash item here. Okay, so you have to pick one thing or the other. And if you have lots of things, I recommend using the chips view. If you only have a couple of things, the segmented view is nice because then it will uh, fill up the entire width of your screen here. Okay. Typically, I don't give this choice component a title. So all they see is just this way to select two different things. And then what you do is you add visibility condition on the components of this screen so that the components that you want to display are gonna be dependent on whatever the user is selecting. Okay, so this choice component, again, is gonna be written to the, oh, we need a choice for that. Okay, so we're going to create a new column called menu choice. And I usually make it user specific. Okay. And this choice component is going to write to that column. So the choice component will write to menu choice. It's going to write either the word categories or write the word things. Okay, then what we do is in this categories, we're only going to display this list of categories when menu choice is categories. Or we could, if you want to, be, if you want to do a shortcut, you could say like something includes a part of the word catig for categories, right? Now, if it's the first item in the list and the user hasn't selected anything yet, then usually I make it where menu choice is empty as well. So whether they choose categories or whatever this first thing in the list is, in this case it is categories, I'll also mark it where menu choice is empty because they haven't yet selected anything. And then the second inline list, this visible will only show when menu choice includes things, okay? Oh, it's not and or, okay. So because we haven't selected anything yet, it's displaying categories, but as soon as we switch it to things, it changes the list of things. And then back to categories. All right, so now you can create an in-tab menu of items in order to navigate your users to those variety of things. And of course, we wouldn't probably show a horizontally menu here unless we had more than one component. We'd probably just show this list of items as a uh, vertical orientation of categories. All right, so this, ways, this is a way for you to combine two different tabs into one. So then I wouldn't need necessarily a things or a categories, I would just have this one tab, which looks a little bit cleaner. Um, and you can, they can switch between categories or things. 
Now, along the same line, sometimes you want to present a menu to the users where you just have like a list of buttons, and those list of buttons will navigate the user to the correct spot. Typically, in that case, what I do is I house all of these different tabs inside of the hamburger menu here. So I'm going to move the things and the categories to the menu. I'll move the everything here too, it's fine. All right, so we just have this uh, empty tab. And this tab um, is gonna house a bunch of buttons that will do different things based upon what the user is doing. So to create this menu, I created a new table here called Menu. And inside the menu, I have a list of all of the buttons that I plan on including. And then you can have some fancy icons here. I'm using the hero icon. So I found what the hero icon name is. And then you can use the uh, image hero icons column. And you can actually populate a list of icons based on the name. Um, I'll give it just any color here, red. And so we should have a list of icons here that are generated based upon this icon name. Oh, I sorry, icon name, not name. There we go, like that. Um, background color can be white. All right. All right, so then in this case, I'm still gonna, uh, my source will be the uh, menu. And I'm gonna display this menu as a list of buttons. So I'll probably do this with tiles and I'll do a circular shape possibly, and maybe three wide, like this. And I don't wanna display the icon name, just the icon like that. All right, so then based upon what they push, I want something different to happen, right? When they push things, I want them to navigate to the things tab, categories to the categories tab. Uh, maybe favorites opens up a new screen with just their favorited things. Uh, about will go to some about tab, contact will maybe open up an email, and user profile will navigate them to their user profile. Right. So when you have a list like this that you wanna do a variety of things, what you do is you create a custom action based upon the title of that button. So here in the tiles list, I'm gonna change my action to have a create a new action. And then I'm gonna create a series of conditions. So I'm gonna say if name is things, usually I do includes, that we don't have to type as much, like is includes thing. Then we are going to uh, go to tab things. All right, and if name includes category, Catig. Okay, then we'll go to tab category. Right? Uh, if, let's see, if name includes, I think it was profile, my profile, then we're going to show user profile screen. All right, so we'll call this menu, yeah, user profile. Okay, so just to test this out, things should go to the things tab, categories to the categories tab, user profile to the user profile tab. Um, about will go to some sort of about tab here. Uh, contact will open up an email and favorites will be a list of their favorites. So um, let's go ahead and continue editing. So if, name includes contact then we can maybe compose an email to somebody if name includes favorites then we will show a new screen from the things list, maybe. And then maybe we haven't built out our about screen yet. So we'll say if name includes about, then we'll show a notification. Coming soon. Save. 
All right, so they hit about, coming soon, user profile, user profile, contact opens up a new email, right? And then favorites shows a new screen of things, but we're gonna filter this list. So option filter where is favorited is true. Okay, so we favorited these two things. All right, so we can come to things, come to Brixio, favorite it, back, back, go to favorites, and now Brixio is part of my favorites. So as you can see, we have another way to navigate our users around the app using an inline list with a custom action that sends them to different places based upon what they're clicking. The final trick I wanna show you is what if you want to navigate your users from thing to thing, but you only wanna show them one thing at a time, and then allow them some buttons to navigate between the different things. Now, Glide does have an inherent style that lets you do this. This is the swipe style. So I could create a new tab here and source it from the things and make it a swipe style. And whenever you set up a swipe screen, you have to configure the list and set up the save last swipe uh, date time column here. So I'm gonna come back to things and I'm gonna create a new column. It's gonna be a date time column. And I'm gonna call this swiped on. And it's gonna be user specific so that way everybody gets their own version. Okay, I'm gonna edit the swipe list and the save last swipe will be the swiped on. And so now users can swipe through the various items, one at a time, okay? Now, if you wanna provide the same kind of experience without using the swipe style, then you have to build it yourself. And typically what I do is I like to use buttons to navigate uh, users to and from different items. The easiest way to do that is using numbers. We can give a number to each thing, and then we can increment a number or decrement that number and then based upon what number they're currently at, relate it to that numbered thing. Let me show you what I mean. So in this list of things, uh, I'm gonna create a new row here. Oops, sorry, not a new row, a new column. And we'll call this row number. If you have a short list of things, you can just do this manually. Make, make it a number column here. And then just enter in the numbers. Um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine or so forth, okay? If you have a list of a thousand things, you don't wanna to have to type a thousand numbers. The trick that we've learned here is that you can auto-populate this row number by first creating a lookup of all of the different items and making sure that they're unique. So if you wanna have a unique list, make sure you have a row ID attached to this table, all right? And then I can do a lookup of whatever your unique ID is. In this case, it is the uh, things row ID. And I usually call this like all row IDs. And you see this is an array of all the row IDs that exist in this table. And then we're gonna find which row this specific row ID is on based upon the array that was created. And this is a, an array find element index column. And so we're gonna choose our all row IDs and we're gonna find the row ID within that array. And you see it auto populates a number. In this case, zero through seven, which is close to one through eight. It's just that it starts with zero rather than starting with one. Okay. All right, for our purposes, I'm just gonna use this row number column because I've already populated it. All right, so the next thing we have to do is figure out which number we're currently on. So in the users table, I'm gonna create a new column here called, oh, let's call this thing navigation. It's gonna be user specific, and I'm gonna make it a number column. Now, if a user is brand new and hasn't entered in any numbers here, we see that it's blank. So I typically create an if then else column off of this and call this, you know, if thing navigation, where I say if thing navigation is empty, then one else thing navigation. All right, so we're always gonna have a number here, right? And now we can relate that number 
will relate it to the thing. So we're going to relate our if thing navigation, which is a number, one in this case. We're going to match it to the thing's row number. And you see that it found the thing. And then we just bring in whatever we want to display on a detail screen. So we can do a lookup of the thing's name. We can do a lookup of the thing's picture and so forth. So we'll call this image name, right? And then back on this tab that we had the swipe screen, I'm going to convert this to being sourced from the user sheet. And instead of a swipe, I'll choose details. And I'm going to trash everything. <laughs> and now I'll display what I want to display. In this case, I want to display just a singular thing. So I can display uh, an image. And this image will be of the thing. And I want to display this thing's name. Right? And then maybe I want a relation to the thing. I can call it maybe see more. Right? Or actually take them to the, the details screen here. And then I want a way to navigate from thing to thing on this screen. So to do that, I typically use a button bar like this. And I can show the previous thing or the next thing. And then on these buttons, we'll either add one or subtract one from our number, which then makes a new relation to the correct thing. However, I usually use a custom action here, not just an increment, because if our current number is the, is the lowest one in this case, we don't want to go into the negatives because then it won't make any relation. Likewise, our next thing, we don't want to go past the highest number because then again, we won't have a relation. So we need to know what the lowest number is and the highest number is, right? So in this case, we know the lowest number is going to be one, but the highest number is going to be with the max of whatever our row number is. So I'll say max row number. This will be a roll-up column, and we're going to choose the things row number. And we're going to calculate the maximum. In this case, it's eight. All right? You could also get count, I guess, of how many things there are. But I know definitely the maximum row number is going to be eight. All right, so then as part of this button bar here, we're going to choose the left action to be a create a new action. And we're going to make sure that our uh, if thing navigation here, okay, if thing navigation is greater than one, that must mean we're at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we have enough space to go back a, a screen. So as long as it's greater than one, then we will increment our thing navigation by negative one. Okay, else we do nothing. So we don't even need an else here. Okay, we'll call this minus one. All right, what's kind of cool is that because right now our thing navigation is one, it doesn't meet the condition and our previous thing button is disabled, which is awesome because that means we they can't go back the button's disabled, but they can still see that there is a button to push if and when that number gets incremented. All right, the next thing, same thing. So for the next thing, our right action, we're going to do a custom action. And we're going to check to see that uh, as long as the if thing navigation is less than our maximum row number, then we can increment plus one, else nothing. We'll call this plus one. All right, so by pushing next thing, right, we should add one to our thing increment, which then makes a relation to the second item in our list. There we go. So there's thing three, thing four, thing five, thing six, thing seven, 
We can do one more thing, eight, and now our next thing button is disabled because we are on the maximum value. And we can go back through the different items all the way back to thing one, and again, then we can't go any further because this is the lowest item. So again, another way to navigate your users across multiple things using some button bars and some fun relational magic. So hopefully you've learned something new about how to navigate users around your app. There are a variety of methods. I use all of these at various times, depending upon what I'm trying to accomplish. If you have any questions or need any assistance, feel free to leave me a comment below or reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.